أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يعوده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله الخالق البارئ المسبر له الأسماء الحسنى يصبه له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my brothers and sisters, I began with the ayat of the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduced himself. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala glorified himself, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described himself, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described his awsaf, his sifat, and he used his beautiful names, his asma'ul husna, so that we can recognize him. The topic of today's lecture is how can I love Allah? But really, we should change this topic. And the real topic of this lecture should be how can I not love Allah? Not how can I love Allah, but how can I not love Allah? How is it possible not to love Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked this question in Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, كَيْفَ تَكْفُرُونَ بِاللَّهِ He said, كَيْفَ تَكْفُرُونَ بِاللَّهِ How do you deny Allah? How can you not love Allah? كَيْفَ تَكْفُرُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَكُنْتُمْ أَمْوَاتًا فَأَحْيَاكُمْ ثُمَّ يُمِيتُكُمْ ثُمَّ يُحْيِيكُمْ ثُمَّ إِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, How can you not love Allah? How can you deny Allah? When you were dead, كُنْتُمْ أَمْوَاتًا You were dead. هَلْ أَتَى عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ حِينٌ مِّنَ الدَّهْرِ لَمْ يَكُنْ شَيًّا مَذْكُورًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Insan and Surah Al-Dahar, the two names of the surah. He said, has the, has the human being, has a man forgotten the time when he was not even a memory? Not only did he not exist in his material form, he did not even exist in memory. His name wasn't there. Lam yakun shayyam madhkura. He was not even someone, he, was, he had no name, he had no remembrance. He did not exist even in memory. And a day will come when, wallahi, today I'm sitting here and you will say, Yawar Beg is sitting here. Tomorrow when I'm lying here, 
you will say move the body at the back. You will not say move yavar big to the back. You will say move the body to the back. Always the same person. But you will not say move and you will not use my name. You will say move the body. Bring the body. We pray janaza on the body. This is our reality. Between being dead and being dead again. Kuntum amwatan fa'ahyakum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you life. And you deny Allah. And you cannot love Allah. He gave you life. He gave you existence. It is because of his hukum that you are even alive. That you are even breathing. Thumma yumitukum. And he will kill you. You will die. Kul yatawaffakum. Tell them that they will die. Malakul mawti lazi bukkilabikum. Thumma ila rabbikum turja'u. Malakul maut has been set on them. As a watcher over them. He will extract their souls. And you will return to your Rabb. Kul yatawaffakum. Because they said before that. Wa qalu. Aitha zalalna fil ardi. Ainna fi khalqin jadeed. They said after we are lost in the earth. After we have disintegrated and lost in the earth. Will we be created anew? Will we be created again? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says yes. You will be created again because when you were created the first time you did not even exist. So when the one who created you from nothing, how is it difficult for him to recreate you from whatever remnants of yours remain? Even if you are atomized in a nuclear blast, there are still remnants in the air and we know scientifically that this is true. Nothing ever completely disappears. Everything is within the atmosphere, the atmosphere of this earth in, in one form or the other. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when he created you for the first time, you truly did not exist. You truly did not exist. Even your memory wasn't there. Even your name wasn't there. Reflect on this, my brothers and sisters. When a child is born, what do you say? You say, so and so had a child. Maybe the child later on is going to be called Abdurrahman. You do not say Abdurrahman was born. You say so and so had a child. If the, if the father of Abdurrahman is, is Abdullah, you say Abdullah had a son. You do, not, you do not say Abdurrahman is born. Because when Abdullah has a son, Abdurrahman does not exist. It's only many days later that they come to the, oh we should name this child Abdurrahman. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you good and healthy children and give them long and productive lives in Iman. But if for example the child dies soon after it is born. Say the child dies a few days later, a few hours later. What do you say? Who died? Do you say Abdurrahman died? Even though you may have given the child a name. At that point in time you, the, your name Abdurrahman might already be there and you might be using it and so on. Do you say Abdurrahman died? You say, no, Abdullah's son died. You know, Abdullah had a son a few days back. Son died. We are a creature who did not even exist in a memory. Even after we are actually born, we still don't exist. We still don't have an identity. Nobody even refers to us by name, by specifically by name, until some time passes. And then when we die again, our identity disappears, even though the body is still there. People say, move the body here, there, whatever it is. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and you deny? Thumma yumitukum, thumma yuhikum, and he will bring you back alive again. Thumma ilayhi turja'un. And you will return to him. How can we not love Allah? And I began with the ayat relating to the, to the uh, introduction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it's a reality of life that to love somebody you have to know that person. You cannot love somebody without knowing them. 
And so when we say, how can I love Allah, how can I develop the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is important for us to get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you know Allah? You know about Allah. There is a difference. There is a difference. Right? If you ask me, do you know the Prime Minister of India? And I say yes. He is Mr. Manmohan Singh and his father is so on, so, so and so and his mother is so and so and he was born in this village and he was born in, the, in, in Punjab, in Sialkot before partition. I say, boss, I'm not telling you, I'm not asking you, do you know about Manmohan Singh? I say, do you know Manmohan Singh? What does it mean, do you know Manmohan Singh? It means, can you go and say, Salaam Alaikum to him and he will he say, Walaikum Salaam to you? It means, can you walk into his house, will, you, will, will, will he invite you? It means, if you pick up, if you phone him, will he answer your phone? It means, if, if, you, if you invite him, will you come to your house? Yes or no? When you call him and you invite him and so on, he might answer your phone and you say, who is Manmohan Singh's father? You say, I, I, I don't know, I mean, I, you know, I know him, but I don't know who his father is. Do you know where he was born? I have no idea, I don't know where he was born. But you know, yeah, I know him. Come, I'll take you to meet him. And that's the question I'm asking you. Do you know Allah? I'm not saying, do you know about Allah? We know about Allah. Do you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When you ask Allah, does he give you? I'm not talking theory. Individual, the purpose of these lectures in Etagaf is individual personal reflection. I'm not talking theory. Of course, Allah gives. I'm saying you, you, you. Do you have a personal experience in your life where you say, I asked Allah for this and He gave it to me? I am the witness before Allah that Allah exists. Do you have something like this in your life? Can you say that? Because Allah, Allah exists. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this. Ud'uri astajib lakum. Ask me, I will give you. Ask me, I will give you. So did you ask? Did he give you? That is what I mean by saying, do you know Allah? How can you love somebody if you don't know them? And that is why it is important to spend some time and reflect and know Allah. And then only you can love somebody. And tell me, why is it important? Why must I know Allah? Why must I love Allah? Okay, so I, now that you explain to me what is the meaning of know Allah. For example, you said, do you know Manmohan Singh? Well, now that you explain to me what you mean by knowing Manmohan Singh, I'm not giving the example of Manmohan Singh for Allah. Just to illustrate. Now that you explain to me, what does it mean by saying, do you know Manmohan Singh? Well, I tell you, you know what, I don't know Manmohan Singh and frankly, I'm not even interested. Why should I know Manmohan Singh? For what? I have no need for Manmohan Singh. No, no, he's a nice guy. I may be a nice guy, Alhamdulillah. I don't have to know every nice guy in the world. I mean, it's okay. Let him be a nice guy. What do I care? Yes? So that's my next question. My next question is, do you know Allah? And next question is, if you don't know Allah, does it matter? Does it bother you? Should it bother you? Okay, so I don't know Allah, so what? Big deal. Why should I know Allah? For what? My brothers and sisters, there is only one reason why we build a relationship with anybody. Whether you and I like it or not, there is only one reason. Why we build a relationship with anyone, animate, inanimate. And, that is, and what's that reason? Because of the benefit that we get from that relationship. There is no relationship in the world that is built purely on a state of selflessness. Because even the relationships of selflessness, the payoff, the return is the good feeling that you get out of being selfless. You might say, well, I give a lot of charity to, to poor people. I don't get anything from them. So I am selfless. You are not selfless. You get the pleasure of giving charity, which is the highest of pleasures. Why do you think people like Bill Gates and uh, 
you know, uh, Buffett and so on uh, go, are going around the world distributing money for what? Because that is the ultimate. When you have the kind of money where you can literally buy, you know, when, when, when your personal net worth is more than the GDP of some countries, you can buy anything you want. Just accumulating, accumulating material stuff is a sign of mental retard retardness and mental retardation is, I think it is exclusive to the Muslim Ummah. Only the Muslims are stupid enough to buy personal jets and put jacuzzis in them and gold plated Cadillacs and nobody else has that kind of brain. Only the Muslims, you have to be, you have to say la ilaha illallah for your brain to completely disappear and then you can do all of these things. Inna lillahi wa inna lillahi. Nobody is stupid enough to spend a billion dollars on a personal jet, customizing it and putting gold plated uh, escalators and jacuzzis and four poster beds and only a Muslim can do that and only a Muslim did it. There are a lot of people who are not Muslim who have that money and more. But along with that money, guess what? They also have brains. So they don't use that money for that kind of nonsense. They use the money to build their own power. They use the money to build their own influence in the world. They use that money to control the world. They use that money for their own benefit. Allahu Alam, they do not have the, the, the uh, understanding of the Akhirah. But the dunya which they understand, they ensure that they control that dunya by using that money. And they are perfectly happy with traveling first class Emirates. No problem. Or first class Singapore Airlines. No problem. Or even if they have a personal jet, they have a regular personal jet. They are focused more on the uh, on how fast it goes and how efficient, how fuel efficient it is, and so on. And they definitely do not have gold-plated escalators in that stupid jet. Takes a Muslim to do that. Inna lillahi wa inna So a point I'm making is that we build relationships for what? For the benefit it gives us. Every relationship. Whether it's with our parents, whether it's with our spouses, whether it's with our children, whether it's with our friends. Even relationships which are inanimate. For example, today we are talking a lot about global warming. We are talking about environmental protection and so on and so forth. And if you say, well, why must I build a relationship with the earth for example if you want to put it in define it in those terms taking care of the environment you say that's my relationship with the earth why must i build a relationship with the earth i'll say well first of all because that's the only planet which has chocolate so build a relationship with the earth and secondly if you think that if you think that the economy is more important than, than the environment then try holding your breath while counting your money right so you need to build an, a, a, a relationship with the earth because that's the only thing we got. We have, to live in, we have to live here and if you want to live here in a reasonable level of happiness then you must ensure that it is not polluted beyond description. So the next question is with regard to relationships do we need the relationship with Allah? Yes or no? Why? For what? <laughs> Look again into your own life. The point I'm making here is reflect at a personal level. Don't give me intellectual hypothetical answers. I know all of those answers. I'm talking you personally, internally. You said that we need, I need a relationship with Allah. My question is why? How is the fact that today your relationship with Allah either does not exist or it's very weak, how is it affecting you? Is it affecting you? Do you feel the effect of that? You know when you will feel the effect of something, this is again human nature, we feel the effect of something only when we have tasted something better. We feel the loss of something only when we have tasted the benefit of that thing. If you go to one of the villages in our country, where they have no experience of air conditioning or if you are as old as me and we grew up without air conditioning, we didn't even, even the word didn't exist. And if you ask a person from there and you say, do you miss air conditioning? Can he miss air conditioning? 
Is it possible? He might feel very hot and very sweaty and so on and so on. But do you miss air conditioning? Is it possible to miss air conditioning when you never had air conditioning? Is it possible to do that? Yes or no? No. No. I never experienced air conditioning. So how can I miss air conditioning? And that's my question to you. What is the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala May Allah protect us. Illa mashallah. For most of us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's presence or absence in our lives makes no difference anyway. So, build a relationship for what? If I ask you, do you miss Allah? Do you miss Allah? You can miss Allah if you had Allah and you lost Allah. And these, 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 are, these are questions of uh, of the tarbiyah of people. Somebody came to uh, Sayyidina Ali bin Abi Talib and he said that I have been trying to wake up in tahajjud. He said I, was, I used to be regular in tahajjud but for the last one month I have not been able to wake up for tahajjud. And the man was so bothered about that. He was so pained and troubled about that that he went to Sayyidina Ali bin Abi Talib and he said please advise me what can I do? Why did this happen? Sayyidina Ali bin Abi Talib told him, your, your sins have chained you. He said, your sins have chained you. Go make tawbah. Then Allah will allow you in his darbar. Allah will allow, allow you in his court. So people miss something when they have tasted the sweetness of that thing. And that's my question to you is, this relationship with Allah, do we need it at all? And if we need it, why do we need it? And what is that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing in your life right now? Think about that. What if you had that relationship? Next, next level question. What if you had that relationship? I don't have it right now. But if I did have that relationship. Think about that. What would, I, what would happen if I did have that relationship? So how can you build a relationship? As I began, a relationship depends on the benefit you get from it. And how do you increase that benefit? How do you increase your enjoyment of that benefit? By doing only one thing. And that is? What is it? What is it? Ignoring. You've all been branded all this while or what? How do you build that relationship? How do you increase the enjoyment of that relationship? By doing what? All robots. Huh? First make tawbah. First make tawbah for being branded in lectures. By shokar. You heard this word before? Shokar? Yes or no? Yes. You heard this word? For what? To forget it? Thankfulness. How do you enhance the enjoyment of something by what? What is the dalil? What is the dalil? Walayin shakartum. You heard this ayah before? Is this an ayah? Is this a, some share, some poetry of somebody? No? Ayah of Quran. Sure? How many times I have said this thing? Don't sit brain dead. Huh? Wake up. You increase the enjoyment of the blessing by doing what? Shukr. Thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La in shakartum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wala in shakartum, is wala in shakartum, wala in shakartum. Wala in shakartum. Wala in shakartum, la azidannakum. Wala in kafartum. Don't you know what I mean? Wow, wow, La in shakartum, la azidannakum, wala in kafartum, inna adabi la shadi. Say, yeah. Yeah, to bale la in shakartum. 
ہمیں لقما غلط کیوں دے رہا آپ کو اللہ سبحانہ تعالیٰ سیٹ دا ون ہو از تھینک فل ٹو می فار مائی بلیسنگز آئی ول انکریز دا بلیسنگس واٹ از دا فرسٹ انکریز آف دا بلیسنگ دی اویئرنیس آف دا بلیسنگ وچ میکس یو تھینک فل تھینک فلنیس میکس دی اویئرنیس انکریزز دی اویئرنیس آف دا بلیسنگ انکریز آف بلیسنگز ڈز ناٹ مین دیٹ اللہ ول فزیکلی انکریز دیٹ بلیسنگ فار ایگزامپل اف یو آر اف یو ہیو اے ونڈرفل وائف میں اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ گیو یو دوز آف یو ڈو ناٹ ہے ارے پہلے دعا تو دینے تو پھر ہمیں جلدی دعا سے پہلے ہمیں بول رہا بات Those of you who, don't, who are not married, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you a beautiful wife, a good wife, alhamdulillah. Those of you who are married, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you there safe and sound without rocking the boat. Huh? I, am, uh, I, am, I am one of the few people who is against getting married a second time for a very logical reason. If you are married to the right woman, then don't rock the boat. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will increase the blessing because alhamdulillah you would be aware that you are married to this great wonderful person and you will enjoy that and you will appreciate that and you are thankful and she will appreciate that you are thankful, alhamdulillah you have a beautiful life. On the other hand, if you are married to somebody who makes you do a lot of tawbah, then it shows that you are a lousy judge of character anyway. So why make the, why make the same mistake twice? Because the second one you marry will also be bad because you know, you picked the wrong one in the first place. So what is the guarantee that you will pick the right one the second time around? So, so stay with that. Make tawbah, inshallah. Uh, make the, make the uh, you know, this uh, a source of sabr for you, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the same wife without all her problems in Jannah, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. In Jannah, they will not have the problems, right? Appreciating enhances the enjoyment of the thing. So, shukar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you want to build a relationship with Allah, what do you do? Make shukar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, what do we have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for? What do we have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. Specifically, we have to thank Allah for everything, but I wanted to specify because if we just everything, then everything is nothing. Specifically what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. Allah said, A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Ar-Rahman u'allama al-Quran. Khalaqal insan. Allamahu al-bayan. Who is Ar-Rahman? The one who taught the Quran. I want you to imagine Ramadan without Tarawih. I want you to imagine Ramadan without Qiyamul Layl. What Ramadan is that? Just being hungry and thirsty? Ramadan is Ramadan not because of hunger and thirst. Ramadan is Ramadan because of Tarawih. Because of listening to the Kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ramadan is Ramadan because of Qiyamul Layl. Of listening to the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just this one thing, I'm not even talking about the beauty and barakah of the Quran in our lives. I'm not even talking about living by the kalam of Allah. I'm just saying, just listening, the pleasure of listening to the recitation of the Quran. Do you think it is something we should thank Allah for or not? What about salah? Do we need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us salah? I'm not talking about doing so. I'm saying just the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this method of reaching him directly without any interference, without any intercedence. We stand on the musalla, we say, Allahu Akbar, there is you and there is Allah. We make sujood and the, suj- and the sajda is before the arsh of Ar-Rahman as Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us. Do we need to thank Allah for this? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described all the many, many, many things that He gave us for which we need to be thankful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, He is the one who gave you sleep. 
He, gave, he is the one who gave you sleep. Do we need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we can sleep peacefully? Ask the people who suffer from insomnia. Ask the people who suffer from insomnia whether we need to thank Allah that we, can, that we sleep peacefully without any drugs, without any medicines and we, and we wake up without feeling exhausted and tired. <clears throat> Ask people who have sleep, as sleep apnea. They sleep but they wake up exhausted. There's no energy. Do we have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have joints which work <clears throat> without pain? Ask the people who have arthritis. The fact that we have joints which work without pain. We go, we go, we walk or run up and down stairs, absolutely no problem. Do we need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this? Do we need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those of us who don't, who don't wear glasses that you, that we can see without glasses? Do we need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those of us who wear glasses that Allah created this technology where even though the eyesight may be bad, we can still see? Do we need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who have no eyesight that Alhamdulillah we are pre prevented from seeing anything which is haram? Eh? How do you build a relationship with Allah? By shukr. By thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically one by one by one. My brothers and sisters, shukr has two aspects to it. Shukr, it is, there are two conditions for shukr. The first condition for shukr is complete and total obedience to the one that you got the good thing from. Your father gives you something good. And then you disrespect your father. You don't speak to him properly. You deny him his rights. Is this shukr? You are saying thank you to him. You are saying, Jazakullah khair, you know, you gave me this beautiful car. But the father says, you know, can you do this for me? No, I'm, I'm sorry, no time, I'm busy. <coughs> Is this shukr? Even though you said thank you? Obedience. Complete obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this is the first condition and the second condition is never to use the thing which you received from that person against the same person. Never to use what you got from that person against the person. Shukur is to be obedient and shukur is never to use it against the person. We are the citizens of this country. And what is the basic requirement of citizenship of this country or any country? The same two things. That you will obey the laws of the land and you will never do anything which is contrary to the interests of the country. What do you call doing something contrary to the interests of the country? What is it called? Treason. Treason. And the punishment for treason everywhere is what? Death. Why? Because you are not showing shukar. The country gave you citizenship, meaning it gave you an identity, it gave you protection, it gave you a, a name and a place which you can call your own. And then you take that and you go against the law of the same country. Then you are a criminal. You are put in prison. And, to, and, to, and on top of that, what you do is not only do you break the law of the country, but you now do something against the interests of the country. <clears throat> you're spying on the country or you're, co you're colluding and collaborating with the enemies of the country or whatever it was. So now you have committed treason. Now take this example and put it to what we got from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us sight. What do we do with this sight? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us hearing. What do we do with the hearing? هو الذي أحسن كل شيء خلقه وبدأ خلق الإنسان من طين ثم جعل نسله من سلالة من ماء مهين ثم سواه ونفق فيه من روحه وجعل لكم السمع والبصر ولا فيده وجعل لكم السمع ولا بصر ولا فيده 
خلی لما تشکرو اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی ڈسکرائب دی پروسس آف کریشن اینڈ ہی سیڈ وی گیو دیم سائٹ اینڈ وی گیو دیم ہیئرنگ اینڈ وی گیو دیم انڈرسٹینڈنگ بٹ دے ان گریٹ فل وائی بیکاز دا سائٹ دے گاڈ دے یوز اٹ ان ڈس اوبیڈینس آف اللہ دے ہیئرنگ دے گاڈ دے یوز اٹ ان ڈس اوبیڈینس آف اللہ اینڈ دا اینڈ دی انڈرسٹینڈنگ دے گاڈ دے ہارٹ دے گاڈ دے یوز اٹ ان ڈس اوبیڈینس آف اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی The requirement of shukr is that we obey and we do not do it, do anything in disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how do we increase the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? By building our relationship with Allah, with Allah, by knowing Allah, by connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by making shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all that He has given us and by ensuring that we never do anything which is against the ahkam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by remembering that, that, that this relationship is important, why? Because not only because of what it does for us or can do for us in this dunya. It is important and even more important because a day will come when we will need this relationship and that is the only relationship will be there at that time because every other relationship would have severed. Every other relationship would have been severed. The only relationship with will, which will carry on is our relationship with our Creator. And what, what day is that? إِذَا زُلْدِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ زِلْزَالَهَا وَأَخْرَجَتِ الْأَرْضُ وَاسْخَالَهَا وَقَالَ الْإِنسَانُ مَا لَهَا يَوْمَئِذٍ تُحَدِّسُ أَخْبَارَهَا بِأَنَّا رَبَّكَ أَوْحَا لَهَا يَوْمَئِذٍ يَصْدُرُ النَّاسُ وَاشْتَاتًا لِيُرَوْ أَعْمَالَهُمْ فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَهُ That is the day when an atom's weight of good and an atom's weight of evil will be shown. Yara will be shown. That is the day. about which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned us in ayah after ayah after ayah. There are so many of them, I don't want to recite all of them. Pointers, this is enough, inshallah. And that is the day when we will need this relationship. And therefore I want to close and end by asking myself and you one question. And that question is, that when you are standing before the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, Do you want to be standing there as somebody who has a relationship with him? Or do you want to be standing there as somebody who has no relationship with him? Please decide and do accordingly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the opportunity to his ambiya. And he gave us that opportunity. So let's decide. Do we want to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as somebody who has a relationship with Him or as someone who has no relationship with Him? Because that day is going to come. That day is going to come. And if you say that I want to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as someone who has a relationship with Him, then do what it takes to change your life. Do what it takes to change your life. And what did He say about that relationship? What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? about how to build that relationship in the easiest, most beautiful way possible where not only will you love Allah, but Allah will love you. What did he say? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُرُ الرَّحِيمُ I have mentioned this ayah many times, I have mentioned the meaning many times, I don't want to repeat myself again and again. Just a pointer to remind you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Say to them, Ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who claim to love me, tell them, imitate me, follow me, use my way, do everything that I do. And then what will happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you. Allah will love you and if Allah loves you, He will forgive your sins and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is oft forgiving and most merciful. 
غفور الرحیم وی آسک اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی تو ہیلپ اس تو بیلڈ ریلیشنشپ بیلڈ ریلیشنشپ وید ہم وی آسک اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی تو بی پلیزڈ وید اس وی آسک اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی تو اوپن آو ہارٹس تو دا سننہ آف اس نبی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سو دیٹ وین وی میٹ اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی وی ویل ہاو ریلیشنشپ وید اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی آن دیٹ بیسس ریمیمبر اینیتنگ ایلس یو ڈو to build a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be something on your own for which you will not be able to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but if you build your relationship and you work to build your relationship through the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa which is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to do on the day of judgment at least we will have a talking point to say Allah I tried my best and I used the way that you told me to use I tried my best and I used the way that you told me to use now today please save me Keep my, keep, uh, please do not save me from dishonor. Do not reject me because I did my best. Give this some thought and let us try to bring about some changes in our lives. The purpose of all these lectures is not simply to listen and go away. The purpose of these lectures is to bring a change in our lives. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make that easy and possible for us and to give us the strength to do it. Wa sallallahu ala nabihil kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain. برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين والحمد لله رب العالمين